Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. What up? It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic. It's been three years. Woo! Wow. All right. How do the NBA? Should we do the NBA? Three. You can do the, uh, the Inglorious Bastards mix up. Right? Uh, you got to get it straight. However you want to look straight. at it. It's the learn, love, kick ass three years and counting with my boy, Tobias Kennedy. Thank you for being here. Yes. And we're going to call another one of my favorites, Paul Norgrove. He's going to join us as well. It's a special episode. I am so excited. My cheeks hurt already. <laughs> this is going to be great. Thank you for being here. As you know, on the Hotbox, it's been three years now of learning and loving and kicking ass. Thank you. We could not be doing this without every single one of you. So thank you to the Strategic Hotbox family. Thank you to those of you that are pioneers, that you've been with me from the very start, the crazy ones that answer my texts in the middle of the night, whether ask you leadership questions or ask you to help me do something or send me shout outs or, or help find guests and any of those kinds of things. You just, I could not have done any of this without you. And I also want to say thank you to my creepers, the ones that are binge watching, <laughs> the people that, that, that are my fangirls, the ones that are out there that that watch those episodes and come up to me and I just I You're welcome. love <laughs> I love you I love you Toby um, and thank you to the the friends that also watch the episodes and then want to comment on the things that happen in those episodes and text me like girl what up you know that the, just in comment about different moments and topics and I love that as well you are all so precious to me in this and this making this a success and precious to me in the future of everything that I've created and, and built with you and and thank you that's it and so with that in mind I thought to myself how best to celebrate this three years than to pull it all together we've had 78 episodes we've had shout outs from 75 Yay! Yay! I know Unbelievable. It's, it is incredible shout outs from yeah. 25 countries and from all over the United States we've had guests from Ireland the United Kingdom and Paraguay and Macedonia and Australia and Bahamas and Trinidad and Germany and Barbados we've had MMA fighters and NFL players and professors and sex therapists and strip performers and CFOs and best-selling authors. It's, it's been an incredible journey and all of them with three things in common, of course, and that's that they learn and they love and they get out there and they kick some ass. And I think the stories that they've brought to the hotbacks have been pretty special. So we were brainstorming in this celebration of, of what do we do? How do we to, to look back on the OG? And I wanted to share uh, some of those OG moments with you when it all began, when we were first in the brainstorming, the people that fearlessly came and, and, and followed my, my craziness, that fearlessly went, what are you doing? Okay, <laughs> what are you doing? All right, I'm in, and and thought, you know, hey, uh, I I I'll I'll just go for this, and the people that just jump in with two feet, and I'm gonna call this little piece uh, the hot box cherry for you, and I want to show you some screenshots of some messages and some emails that went around. The first is messages between Kindred LA, so shout out to Amanda and Jason who helped us at the very beginning uh, in the creation of this, and I, I was throwing around podcast names, and we came up with the idea of doing the podcast, and I said, what about the Strategic Hotbox? And I, I came up with this, this idea like that, that we had had the Strategic MVP and wanted to, to make it a little edgy and crazy, and I also had these, I, these names of Leading Las Vegas and Learn Love Kick Ass before we even found this beautiful studio here and and uh, sue immediately right back i like it but but and but also maybe this learn love, love kick ass concept is cool too and i said well what if we what if we did both and we had this cool segment concept and then someone came and went, well, well what if what if it's the wrong idea and we get the wrong idea from people what if they think hotbox is all about smoking pot and then I said, well, I'll text a few friends. So I threw some texts out to some friends and, and I sent a message to Jennifer. I said, what does the title Strategic Hot Box mean to you? And she said she thought it was like hot seat, like a conversation about strategy, something that'd be intense and hard hitting. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I was going for. And she asked me and she went on to ask me, but I thought, and I thought it was like a, a condensed place where we could have authentic conversations where the things that I'm breathing out, the other person is breathing 
breathing in, which is essentially what a hot box is, but in a leadership sense of, of how is it that we get down and dirty with some of the concepts and keep it real. I want to have the conversations, and we've been having the conversations here in the hot box of, about business in a way that we have it offline. We don't get to have these conversations in the boardroom very often. We don't get to have these conversations when we're being politically correct. And so that was what the hot box was trying to be built around, or we tried to build it around. And then we had amazing people like uh, Toby that came on and joined us. And we're going to dig into his uh, his you know, uh, debut here in a second, but he did share. And we said, uh, you know, we should probably try this social media thing, you know, cause we have a podcast now. We just have an episode out and we should try the social media thing. And so he shared it out on social media and we were so excited because if you look down the bottom there, for those that are watching, we had 260 likes. So we had a Facebook page. We started 260 Ooh. likes. It was more than our business, you know, our company had at the time. We we're just like, wow, this is incredible. And then people started watching and listening to the podcast and we went, whoa and it grew and then we had a thousand when we had a thousand we're like oh my gosh we better start paying attention to this podcast thing and, and, and have a few more episodes and then we had ten thousand, and we went oh my gosh we better start setting goals around this podcast and then we had a hundred thousand and then we went oh oh no <laughs> now 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 we have something to really strive for and and today we're sitting at over four hundred thousand on facebook alone and not to mention some of the other social platforms and places that people listen and watch so so thank you Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I can, uh, I, I couldn't do this without these individuals as well. These are the, um, the, the homies. We call these the hotbox homies. And one of the, the OG homies is Carly. I sent her a message and I said, hey, so if I sent you a t-shirt, you know, would you be a sexy model for me? And she immediately wrote back, I'd be honored. And so she sent me some pretty awesome pics of her in her hot box gear, as did many of you. And so I really appreciate all of you that did that for us as well. And just helping us get that word out. None of the growth would have happened without all of the sexiness that is all of you that are out there. And this is kind of the culmination of all of it. One of uh, the guests that uh, you just listened to is kind of the, the round out of our, our season two is the amazing illustrator and author, Jessica Hagee. And uh, if you don't know her, check out her book. She's been featured in a lot of, of books and she is a, a bestselling author herself, but she created this for us. And it's through the learning and the loving that then, you know, catapults you into the kicking ass. And she creates this, uh, this card for us, this note card for us. And, and in doing that. But it all began with this individual. And this is Shauna Shearson. And I wanted to share that uh, this story with her. I, when this all started, I said, okay, I'm going to do this, but I need a first couple guests. So I sent two text messages out. I sent one to Mr. Toby Kennedy. We're going to introduce you here in just a second. And I sent a second to Shauna Shearson. And Shauna is a, a good friend. And she uh, immediately said yes. And she was the very first episode that we filmed. And we ended up, because of the topic, we switched it and we we aired it uh, a little bit later and we aired Mr. Kennedy first, but she was the very first one. And so I wanted to give her a special shout out for being our number one guest. And uh, she sent us a little message and shout out as well. Scott, would you play? Hey, it's Shauna Shearson in Bakersfield, California at Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, giving a shout out to Brandy Love. Congratulations on three years at the Strategic Hotbox. I'm so happy for you, you amazing rock star, and I am so glad I don't ignore your random texts. <laughs> Have a happy anniversary and many more. I think there was a little bit of cynicism in her ignore your random text, <laughs> to be honest. No, thank you so much, Tashana. She She's always been a part of the process all along the way. And now I'd like to formally introduce you to the man, Mr. Episode One, the original gangster right here in front of me, executive vice president of Montage Insurance Solutions and CEO of Sim Policy, healthcare expert and speaker extraordinaire, Tobias Kennedy. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that as an intro, I got to be reminded that the writer I had in my contract to bump Shauna off the first episode ultimately <laughs> happened. I'm, I'm confident she'll watch this. And uh, Shauna, I'm really glad that uh, I was episode one. <laughs> <laughs> Shauna, who I know and love as well. Yeah, so, yeah, and thank you yeah. for you. Uh, what was it like uh, getting that text message from me of saying, hey, remember that thing we chatted about uh, over drinks? Yeah, I'm going to do it. And would you be my, you know, 
Uh, it was on brand, mm -hmm. uh, as you typically are. So uh, I know that, you know, a lot of things are talked about over drinks that don't always come to culmination. But I think that that's probably part of uh, what makes you and this podcast special is, you know, you don't need all the lights to be green before you get going. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to the idea that you started this and really, truly did it would have been shocking if you were one of a lot of other people in my world. But kind of knowing you, knowing who you were, I was like, yeah, I mean, she said it. So she's she's going to go ahead and manifest it. And if mm -hmm. I can be any part of it, you know, let alone the first guest was a, just a, and still is a tremendous honor. Um, but it was, uh, it was really cool. Thank you. Oh, so how are you? What's up? Good. Yeah. What's been going on? Um, you know, changes, changes, mm -hmm. right? It's been three years, uh, which is, you know, on one end, you're kind of like, wow, that's crazy. Three years. And you think about, you know, I, you get these like Facebook memory pushes mm -hmm. and you're like, God, that feels like it was yesterday. That's a million years ago, except my mm -hmm. beard's grayer. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> but, you know, time kind of comes and goes. And at the same time, I, I went from no kids mm -hmm. to I've got two kids wow. and I've got one that just turned three. Right. So mm -hmm. right around when this uh, started, my wife was, you know, whatever, 36, 38 weeks pregnant. And, uh, my three-year-old's fully online. Like we talk, we chat, he's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I think back to that episode to now and you just, it, it's like on the one hand, it feels like it was yesterday. On the other hand, if you look at some of the things that have been built, not only, you know, my kids, but 400,000 followers for this, mm -hmm. you know, strategic mm -hmm. hotbox, like it's a testament to how you really just kind of do it one day at a time and one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And maybe you don't see the growth. Uh, in any particular moment and then you zoom out and you look back and mm -hmm. man Rome's Rome's halfway built man <laughs> <laughs> right, right yeah it's true and like you said things happen so quickly people all commonly will ask about like going to school or going how do I have kids when I'm working in a career and you just do if you if you want to do it you just do time goes by yeah I think they're trying to see there from here mm -hmm. you know what I mean and you're like don't worry about that like you, you drive home every night with your headlights they only illuminate whatever 50 100 feet in front of you or whatever it is mm -hmm. don't at me car guys whatever it, it, it <laughs> illuminates. but it doesn't go all the way to your house you don't right. need to see the complete destination you see a little bit in front of you you make the wise decisions you kind of correct the wheel mm -hmm. to keep you on the road and you, you take it from there and then all of a sudden you're home yeah. And so what makes you say yes to some some things? You said yes to this, but you also say yes to other things in your life to keep you moving forward. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, um, you know, first of all, what are, what are we here for, right? Mm -hmm. If not to, you know, d do crazy things and live a little. But, you know, this specifically I can answer because I remember, you know, we had done several speaking engagements and, you know, I, I don't know how many people kind of know the the origin stories of us but we were both kind of on the speaking circuit among the other professional things you do and, and that i do um and your book was really interesting to me um you know I, I read a lot and i also like i travel a lot so i'm on audible a bunch mm -hmm. uh so i consume content is probably the right way to put it but your book was very like it, it was something that it, it had immediate takeaways it had immediate value it wasn't as like ephemeral as some of the other things that I sometimes get into. And I just, again, kind of tethering this back to the moment where I wasn't surprised that you ended up doing it. You're such an action person. And that book is, it's, it's such a great book, not to sit here and plug, well, it's your podcast. I'll plug the book for you, <laughs> but check out the book. The book's amazing. And it has a lot of great, you know, if you're involved in any level of, of business or management whatsoever, it, it has immediate things that are useful in it. Um, and so that to me was one catalyst to really want to get behind the pod mm -hmm. uh, because I knew it was it was going to go from, mm -hmm. you know, the, the poultry 260 likes to 400,000. It's a, it's a reminder for me, though, and even listening to you that it is a part of who I am and, and I do need to not get to get I, I get drowned like I get to where I'm in this place of drowning a lot <clears throat> especially lately in work there's so many things going on work and life and and there's so much that I drown so much that I don't end up doing things as effectively as I can I don't end up executing because I put them off because I'm so busy that's become my new well, thing so Bruce Lee talked about hack away at the unessential mm -hmm. right and you know that quote always sticks with me and I'm paraphrasing the quote but the idea that there really is a lot going on. So you're talking about, oh, I'm really busy or, mm -hmm. or this or that. And it's like, well, A, what all are you, are you busy with? And B, what are you actually trying to do or accomplish? And if you can kind of pour some more of your energy into those sorts of things, 
and again, be okay with incremental progress that you maybe don't see immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, but just, you know, the, that's how things actually end up doing and happening. Right. And you kind of just have to say yes. Sometimes it reminds me of one of the best moments that I uh, remember on the, the, the podcast. And that's when we, uh, Shauna forced me to go a different Shauna. Shauna Richardson forced me to go skydiving. Yeah. And that I, I said yes. And then we scheduled it. And then it just happened. And uh, it was one of those things that I'm glad that we did because then it was scheduled and it just went and and it really forced that disruption. I love that episode. Please, anyone that, you know, is out there, check that episode out, rewatch it. I actually rewatched it again recently because it is such a reminder. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit off air. I'm, I, you know, I mentioned cooking through some content. I'm reading a book on habits right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really interesting when you zoom out and, and try to try to determine how much of your day or world or life is something that you've baked in because at one point you made a decision to do X, Y, or Z, and now that decision has become habit. And how can you break that? Do you, I mean, you don't need to be as, as violently broken as jumping out of an airplane, mm-hmm, at, you know, 13,000 mm-hmm. feet or whatever it was. But that's 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 one way. And, and it's such an amazing story of a microcosm of looking at what you have going on. And you guys even mentioned the word rut, looking at any ruts and kind of saying like, all right, well, what's one way out of this? And certainly jumping out of a plane was, <laughs> was one way out. Shake it, <laughs> shake it all up. But I also learned about fear and myself and just bigger perspectives and things too. Um, the, but another favorite moment that I really want to highlight now in the in in some of our discussions and show and share with you is the shout outs. We've I've given some thank yous, but having friends and strangers and randoms be willing to say hello to us has been incredible. And so we've put together a mashup of some of our favorite shout outs and I'd love to go out to that mashup now. <laughs> This pastrami will expand your ass, but listening to my girl Brandy Stankovic on the Strategic Hot Box will expand your mind. What's up, what's up? It's your boy Liko. I'm a professional dancer, choreographer, and designer. You are listening to Brandy Stankovic on Strategic Hot Box. What's up, Brandy? Ryan Anderson here with Son of a Digger. Where are you at? Stacy from season two, Negative Afraid XL here. Wanted to give a shout out to my girl, Brandy Stankovic. My name is Willie Kenyon, and I'm listening to the Strategic Hot Box. What's up, Hot Box listeners? This is Jeff from the sidelines at AT&T Stadium. Just want to give you a quick shout out to Brandy. Mom's on Strategic Hot Box. Listen up, because she's smart and cool. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Uh, here in Belfast at the Crown, uh, waiting to meet with Lori Jamesons, and uh, just wanted to send a big shout out to my baby girl, Brandy Stankovic. <laughs> You're listening to my granddaughter Brandy's hot box. She's special. I love her. Carl Mitchell, yes, maybe World War II. This is Brandy Stinkovic, the most beautiful, inspiring, intelligent creature on the planet. Dr. Love, Dr. Love. Mary Turk, it's Gracie from Mike the Gym, this is my team. Because of the strategic hot box, I have a kick-ass commute to work. Oh, 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 yes! Oh. If you want to have what I just had, then you'll keep listening to my girl, Brandy Stankovic, on the strategic hot box. This is Tiffany, coming at you live from Katz's Deli in New York City. 
that fills my heart so much seeing those shout outs. Yes. It's so incredible. Um, one, I my I feel just emotion seeing my family, my baby, and of course my grandpa and the fact that he gave a shout out and, you know, rest in peace and, and my dad and Lord Jameson, that just cracks me up. And then even Tiffany, she... It, that she had at the beginning and the end, she just has a way of bringing it all together for us. And so thank you. And shout out back to all of, of my homies for, for doing that. So incredible. Yeah. I tried to pick a favorite. I was leaning didgeridoo early on. And then obviously you had the beefcake and Papa yeah. Mitchell. Um, but closing out with Tiffany at the delicatessen <laughs> was, uh, I'll say special. Yeah. How, how do you not, how do you not do that? Uh, so that's a lot of successes and those guys are awesome. Uh, I'll tell you though, you know, for me, I think that when I'm thinking about what people might be interested in, too, is a look in some of the non-successes. What's your favorite, like, outtake, memory, blooper? What's some of those that you got going on for us? Well, there's uh, only one episode where we, because we film live here on the Hotbox. So many people, if you don't know that, we film where once we start, yep. we go until the end. So there's some yep. craziness that have occurred. I remember one episode with Matt, when we were talking about sales, there was gangster rap playing in our <laughs> ears, and we had to pull our earphones out. But, but there's only one episode where we uh, had to refilm, and that was a, a financial literacy episode where that we kept the interview but we refilmed my portion. And the reason we did that is because I had super cleavage going on and <laughs> if it had been a better topic, but it was kids' financial literacy. Uh, and those, yeah, it. like how do I roll is out an episode? that you went from 1,000 to 400,000 yeah, likes? So that's really how we got the more of was an episode. Yeah, exactly. No, so that's the only one that we've had. But the best bloopers ever have got to be my kids. And so I want to show that. Wishing the Sajijic Hotbox a happy third anniversary. And my mommy a happy 29th birthday. Big cheesers. You're listening to my mommy. Thank you. <laughs> You're listening to my mommy. <laughs> okay, go. You're listening to my mommy. <laughs> You're listening to my mommy. Thank you. <laughs> You're listening to my mommy. Thank I want to see you, mommy. Arms on him. You're listening to my mommy. Thank you. Thank you. You're listening to my mommy. Thank you. You're listening to my mommy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're still punks yes. <laughs> even now. They really uh, are. That's they, like the end of a good Jackie Chan movie. Much, <laughs> much more, uh, much more mature in their approach, but they're still little punks. Um, so the, we'll move from bloopers to wait, one of. Wait, wait, we're moving from bloopers. I thought you mentioned there's there's two of your favorite bloopers. No, 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 no. We're not showing B-roll. clips of the cleavage. Right, no, well, no, 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 no. And I guess let's move on. <laughs> I didn't get the rundown. <laughs> um, one of my most favorite guests, as uh, we mentioned at the top, is also our first ever impersonal international guest. And he is a CEO at, at uh, Police Credit Union in the United Kingdom. And he was here with us uh, at very really early on. And I'd love to play a little clip and then bring him in to chat with us as well. So let's uh, take a look at Paul Nurgrove and his time with us. Um, the best learning experiences come from doing something that's outside of your comfort zone. So whether it's mm. sat here today after no sleep and a long, long flight um, <laughs> or, you know, public speaking the first couple of times, it doesn't matter what position you're in, whether it's a leadership position or not. The best learning experiences and things that you carry with you are things you've done for the first time or it's outside your comfort zone. So for those that are listening that think there's no way I could do something like that, like what do you do? Uh, I don't think I've ever gotten over the nerves for anything. I was nervous before coming on today. I think you just have to live with them and I think they're a good thing. I think it proves that you care and I think they are... They're a reminder of what you're doing. It's, it's important. So it, I really have no idea what you just said. I was completely lost in your accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm batting my eyelashes for anyone who knows. I, <laughs> so that you, it's automatically sound more sophisticated, just so you know. So for those yeah. of you that are, that are listening. So this is our first ever international guest. Formally introduce you to Paul Norgrove. Hello, Paul. Hi, all the way from the UK. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How thank was you for having it? me back. Uh, do you know Toby here with us today? 
Mr. Paul, I don't hello, know Toby No, but I have watched I have watched his episode, um, and I particularly love his thoughts on culture, and and that's a big part of what we're doing here at PCU. So, uh, big shout out to Toby, and he is Hotbox royalty as uh, guest number one. Uh, cheers! <laughs> Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you, sir. So, how are you doing? Was it weird to watch back and see you? Uh on the hot box uh yeah hopefully the accent hasn't changed and uh you can still flirt the eyelashes uh, and other bits <laughs> of pieces um the, the main thing for me is i think toby hit on the head in the first one it feels like uh only five minutes ago but during that five minutes so much has happened in a in a journey in life um but it's certainly different looking back i feel like i've evolved uh, a lot more uh, for the experience so uh you know thank you for having me there what is the biggest change in your life from that episode till now uh, I'd probably say, uh, from a personal perspective, the the need to spend more time with with uh, people that I care about, um, you know, loved ones, uh, investing in colleagues, and I'll also put important people as myself in in that list in terms of, yeah. you know, not being afraid to to self care, uh, recharge, eat well, live well. I would say drink less, but that would be lying. Um, <laughs> But, but essentially just just um, being aware of my own purpose in life and making sure that you know my interactions with people around me, particularly people I care about, are, are positive ones for them. So that would be a big change uh, in my life um, and lots of other things as well, uh, I'm sure, how did in terms the, of family, friends, etc. Yeah, and how did the hotbox or did the hotbox uh, change your perspective or challenge you? Uh, I think it was one of the learning items from from our episode together uh, way back in November 17 was was the the need to surround myself with with, with good people um, people who share the same passion I think I said in the interview then I couldn't expect people to deploy the same passion that I have uh, and that that was a mistruth because I found those people uh, they're out there they exist um, and I'm surrounded by myself with people who do things that uh, I can't do and they do them well We've reorganized the whole team, uh, and that was a huge takeaway from me. In terms of the challenge, um, you know, speaking on a podcast after a long flight and very little sleep was a bit of a challenge. I was extremely nervous. Um, and since then, really, I think stepping outside the comfort zone uh, and doing things in spite of fear and, and embracing them is something that I've carried forward. So it challenged me, but um, it refined me and made me a better individual. Hmm. So thank you. Oh, thank you for being part of it. We've been doing uh, some reminiscing here, uh, as you've seen. Any favorite parts of the show? Some learning or the loving or? Um, I think it's a kick-ass and probably a little bit of uh, loving as well. <laughs> um, particularly the skydive episode. I, I think that one, if you're going to watch it, there's there's some brilliant context on empathy. Uh, I think Shana talks about, who's also amazing, by the way, who talks, who talks about uh, the comments after the skydive and how you guys felt, um, predominantly around trusting your life in the hands of an individual you didn't even know. Mm. Uh, and I think that was a huge takeaway for me. So a little bit of love, but kick ass because you jumped out of a plane. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole experience of, of giving up something to someone, trusting them immediately, uh, and then having an amazing experience is something that everyone can benefit from. So uh, I'd probably say a little bit of loving. Uh, a little bit of kicking ass. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I remember when you were here and you were so nervous and trying to calm <laughs> your nerves because there were a couple episodes that we filmed that day mm -hmm. that you uh, and so there was a lot of build up in going forward to it. Do you still feel those uh, nerves? Um, I think nerves are always a good thing. I said it then. I think mm -hmm. if you don't have nerves, it's, it's not important. Um, I, I think nerves are a positive thing and you should try and embrace them. Mm -hmm. uh, slowing down, speaking clearly uh, mm -hmm. with this accent is sometimes difficult. <laughs> um, but I, I do think um, in terms of nerves and other bits and pieces, you have to embrace them and move forward. But yeah, particularly that day, you know, there were some real stellar individuals uh, taking part and I was sitting around for long periods of time. Including you. And I think, including, including me. Um, and you have to be able to sort of uh, listen, see what's going on, get into the rhythm of the day. And also just wait for your time because it always comes. So, yeah, pretty much that. Absolutely. Do you have a do you have any thoughts or questions for him, Toby? Yeah, Paul. I thought your uh, your conversation was brilliant. I'm interested to hear you circling back to who you surround yourself with. And I'd, I'd wonder about this because I, in danger of putting words in your mouth, but I find myself doing this as well 
in my personal life, right? So I found myself drawn, and it doesn't matter what, like one of my best buddies is a tremendous improv actor. One of mm-hmm. them's just an amazing musician. One of them's literally the, the, the best, you know, female soccer coach in the country. And surrounding yourself with those types of folks, I'd, I'd question, are you just talking per- professionally? Or are you talking personally as well? Or do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I, think, I think it's life. I think so. Professionally, absolutely, the benefits come uh, as a purpose for your job and employment, but also from life. And I think you hit the nail on the head then with your friends. Um, you know, you surround yourself with good people. Um, even if the skills aren't necessarily obvious to transfer, you're all elevating each other. Um, you know, I have plenty of friends on different career paths, different life journeys. Uh, you know, I was one of the first out of uh, our group to have children. I had them young. Um, so a lot of the, you know, a lot of my friends will come to me and talk about children and stuff. Now they're in that cycle of having a one-year-old, two-year-old, which I do not miss at all. <laughs> no, uh, I don't. You know, sorry, I get, Toby. I, don't I have know. a three-month-old brother. <laughs> <laughs> I get to sleep. I'm really sorry, Toby. Uh, you might not every night, but um, I think you're absolutely right. I think in terms of surrounding yourself with good people in and out of work, just in life, elevates you and it elevates them. And I think. You know, the, on the flip side of that, there's also the, the take of a, a toxic individual, either in a professional setting or personal setting, can can really drain your energy. And I think um, the importance of, of understanding the impact other people have on you is, is massively important from an emotional standpoint, but also what it does to you and what, what you do to other people as a result. If, so, if there's someone toxic in your life, it, it can essentially mean that you're not performing to your best to the people around you and that's really important and, and i think a, a life lesson for anyone no matter who it is no matter how long you've known them if the, if they are toxic or, or they're impacting you negatively don't be afraid to let them go because there's a there's millions of wonderful people out there with, with skills and mm. energy and experience that you you can really get into and i think when you get into that that cycle you'll be amazed at how much your life just improves incrementally by surrounding yourself with positive people just for the record, you guys are the friends that I brag about at parties. So yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I have uh, these friends, like one much. from the UK and one that plays, you know, soccer. And um, so, any advice or bold action items or takeaways for the listeners and watchers today, Paul? Uh, I think I think I, I went into it then and, and said a little bit about not being afraid and no fear. But I, I think that's an absolute uh, huge learning for me, and, and I feel like that's that's been the tool for progression. I think the the absolutely learn absolutely love absolutely kick ass but at the same time don't be afraid to be authentic and do it your own way because it, when you when you fail doing it your own way it's much easier to pick yourself up and, and, and learn from it um, but when you succeed with other people and you kick ass with other people you know you can celebrate and love that environment that you create so it, it's essentially live without fear uh, live with purpose you know incremental small steps but enjoy every single moment of it and, and do it your way because it's not a dress rehearsal oh i loved it it was perfect thank you so much thank you for being here and being part of this three-year celebration with us paul thank you for joining the the hot box all along the way no problem and congratulations on the three years and the amazing what you've done thank you good seeing you talk to you later Take care. head out to our international shout out Soy Pablo Cornejo de Argentina. Uh, we're in downtown Melbourne, Australia. Hi, Brandy. It's Jacob from the Vienna Boys Choir. We are now in Budapest. I'm from Cameroon. Greetings from Santiago. We're in Ghana, West Africa. Euch dabei zu haben und euch zu fahren. Hi, I'm Brian from Dublin City Bike Tours. Hi, I'm Melanie and I'm from Ireland. Do you great. Oh, yes, I'm Dom. I'm Benson. And I am a tour guide in Kenya. Hello, my name is Eleonora Zgonyalin Petrovic. From Malawi. In the city of Mexico. Hola, my name is Adrián, I'm from the city of Mexico. Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Laura Zavala y estás escuchando a Brandy Stankovic. From Panama. I'm from the Philippines. Mabuhay. I'm from Singapore, Kipa Innovation Lab. I'm Tammy from Thailand. Aberfeldy, Central Purchase, Scotland. St. Lucia, the Helen of the West. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, the land of Soka, Calypso and Limbo. You're here in very sunny, sunny London. I got spring as well, You're listening 
to Randy Stankovic on the Strategic Hot Box. Hot Box. The Hot Box. Hot box. Hot box. Hot box. Hot box. The 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 hot box. Hot box. Hey, go Randy. I love the international so shout cool. outs. So ah! cool. They make me like almost teary out every time I watch that. And Paul's accent still does it for me. I honestly, I just even staring at the, the TV like, ah, good thing you were listening because I just have a tough time with that. That's it. I'll give you a full recap later. He was excellent. <laughs> okay, he was excellent. Good. I assure you. Good. I'm going to have to message to thank you later. So I'm yeah. going to need to know what the heck he said. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think, I feel like you, you may have uh, felt I'm, like, like I forgot that you we might have some clips of your episode I mean, it's a long like, time ago yeah did dust i mean off the this is this somewhere? is back in the vhs days That's you it. know but That's we it. we did rewind and uh -huh. we you were um kind. uh you can't get away with this that we're going to show a little clip from from the very beginning yes. here's toby on the hot box the listeners, what's one thing uh, the people that are watching sure. that they could go implement based on your experience and some of the things that that you offer businesses? Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I, so as uh, not to, to be redundant, I would say that one other um, uh, tangible takeaway that we've done at our organization that I think uh, ties a ribbon around some of the stuff we're talking about was we did an all staff meeting and we asked people to uh, tape uh, uh, sheets of paper to their chest with five interesting facts about them that maybe other people hmm. didn't know. Uh, and so uh, a large portion of the, the beginning of the staff meeting was devoted to walking around, reading these fun facts, unpacking them, learning a little bit more about your coworkers. How cool uh, and was I that? Think that? Yeah, no, it was, it was really, it was really cool. Uh, my first fact was that I'm a huge Brandy Stankovic fan. Oh, but I think right. Everybody already knows that about me. <laughs> So, uh, but no, I think that it was a, a good, that's a fun, silly, easy way for an organization to start uh, attempting to break down some culture, uh, maybe barriers that might be there and maybe build them back up uh, a little bit stronger. So look at that. We just happened to do some facts here hey. while your video was playing. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't watching it, so I had plenty to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the fact that flattery gets you everywhere, you know, my first fact, of course, it worked back then, smooth back then, smooth today. You got but it. Uh, I love Toby too. And and some Paul, I put Paul in there. And I should have put accents. I shouldn't have added accents. Um, but uh, number two, I love guacamole. Who doesn't love me some guacamole? I love to dance. I love art. I love see all the, the O's, O's in there. And then uh, I'm the Connect Four champion of the world. I don't know if you knew that. I did not. Um, I put a couple fact Rooney's myself. Uh, I did play Division One college soccer. Um, that mm. was, um, you know, quite some time ago. I'm an Australian <laughs> citizen, so Paul, I can uh, tip my cap at your lovely accent. Although I know. Walk like a duck, talk like a duck, uh, smell like a duck. I'm a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, which uh, sometimes surprises people in a business setting. <laughs> I uh, will see you connect four, and I'll raise you beer pong. Oh. I am uh, a champion beer pong player. Uh -oh. uh, I used to go by the name Undefeatable, and uh, <laughs> I do have an extreme fear of heights, so I guess there is something that can Well, there's some five interesting facts. And since Thank this you. is a very special episode, um, uh, we're going to challenge one another. We're going to go into maybe a little learn, love, kick-ass competition. And so the way this kick, this competition is going to break down, I'm going to come right here, Scott, that's cool. This way this competition is going to break down is I'm going to pick three heats, and then Toby's going to pick three heats, and then I'm going to challenge him. I'm going to take him down, and we're going to see who's better at some of these things. And then we're going to see who's the wiener. Who's going to win at this Learn, Love, Kick-Ass competition? And then, you know, we'll crown up that uh, Learn, Love, Kick-Ass winner at the end of all of this. What do you think? Uh, again, on brand, Brandy. I'm not surprised that you're going to see. Yeah, I, I got you, kiddo. I, I see you. Uh -huh. Are you ready for this? I am stoked. We could do it today. We can make this happen today. I happen to have a later flight. All right, perfect. It's about to go down. Let's do it. We'll be back. We'll see you in a sec. Today on the hot box, and because of that, yeah, I'm nervous. Part of the competition is going to be a little dance competition. Say what? 
And so we have some professionals here with us. It's about to go down. We are in Arthur Murray, Las Vegas, and the professionals are going to show us what's up. I, although I feel like one professional has a little bit more work cut out for her to help Toby along the way. So did you bring your dance shoes? Are those dance shoes? They're two left feet. Uh-huh. Uh, they're both left feet. Both of those <laughs> yes, shoes yes, are left. Yes. Yeah, well, it's, it's about to go down. All right, Hotbox crew, uh, Brandy has done what she always does to folks, which is to uh, either throw them out of airplanes or throw them in the deep water. La, 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 la. And uh, I'm here with my girl Maybelline. Maybelline, uh, you got a heck of a job cut out for you, um, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm ready to kick Toby's butt. I don't know about you guys, and I luckily have John here to show me the ropes. And so we're gonna do a little salsa dance, so do you think, think Toby can do it? Whew, we'll see, we'll see. Seriously? No, I <laughs> I shouldn't talk too much shit because there's a chance that he's gonna blow our minds because Toby kind of has that that charisma that can schmooze just about anybody. But I'm banking on this one. Of all the different ones that we have set out for today, I'm banking on this one. So if I don't nail the dance, I, I don't know who I'm gonna be as a human being. Let's be honest. We'll see. Um. So it is uh, as difficult as expected, which is probably not great, because uh, I was hoping to take to it like a duck to water, um, but I am taking it to it like a, a duck to a, a turducken. Hey, what's up, Jonathan, guys? I'm with Brandy, you know what? We're killing it on the dance floor, and honestly, they should just stop. They should just give up, because we're just gonna kill it. That's it, peace out, done, we're good. All right, everyone, so Toby came in off the bat saying two left feet, but I completely disagree. I think John, sorry, Brandy, too, you guys are going down. Uh, whose chairs are those? The, the judges? The judges? You're not going to need the whole chair. You just need the edge, bro. Jeez. I'm judging. Time you remember open your eyes? Give me the red marker. <laughs> <laughs> opportunity to dance with a guy that knows how to dance. So that's, you know. What are you trying to say? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is also some bullshit after I just gave him a 10 for some shimmies. So we just finished our dance uh, uh, 
recital. We'll just call that a recital. <laughs> or a competition where I kicked Toby's butt. Thank goodness for Zach for pulling out the extra zero because otherwise, Stink face. The Otherwise, stink face I'm the is, only zero in this. Stink uh, face is already <laughs> happening today. But I wanted to just recap with Maybelline and John. First of all, thank you so much yeah. for allowing us to be thank here you. and jump in with you guys. And for all of the Strategic Hot Box listeners and watchers, uh, we were jumping feet first. What was it like to just jump in and dance? It was difficult. It was a real challenge. Um, thank God, honestly, it, it's, uh, it's a real lesson. And if you've got a great teammate and you can kind of give yourself over to that teammate, then you can make a lot more progress than you thought. So really fortunate to have Maybelline on my team. So one of the things Brandy always loves to do on the Strategic Hot Box is give you a kick-ass takeaway. Uh, unfortunately, I did not win today in the dance competition, but I did win in leaving with a kick-ass takeaway, which is to be honest with you, you need to remind yourself sometimes you can do stuff maybe you didn't think you can. So get out there, try, do it, and kick ass. <laughs> Longevity Sports Center about to uh, get our soccer on. Yeah, we had a decent little warm up. Um, I told Brandy, I don't mind playing some soccer, but uh, I can't just jump into it anymore. My quad's gonna explode. So we got a little warm up in and we're ready to rock and roll now, man. And I tell him, you know, I kick the ball around with five year olds. I feel like. Same seas. Total it's, same seas. It's not, it ain't gonna be a thing for me. No like big a chicken deal. Wing. Yeah. So we're gonna play a little game. He's gonna kick some balls. I'm gonna stop him and I'm gonna show him who's boss. So I was thinking we'll do a little game where we can kind of blend um, some goalkeeping skills, which was the position I played growing up. So we're gonna line 10 balls up. Um, I'd say it's about 12 yards from goal. And uh, the person on offense can just do whatever they want. They can throw, they can punt, they can drop kick, they can hit it off the floor. And uh, if you score uh, you know, five or more, you get a point. If you score fewer than five, you're out. You gotta swap, get yourself in net. We'll have the other goalkeeper come out and we'll just uh, take it from there. Of Seems course. easy enough, right? <clears throat> right. Ladies first, kiddo. Okay. So, I've just kicked 10 soccer balls, and I feel really good about it. Am I not going to be able to move tomorrow? I feel like I've earned this bottle of water. And uh, yeah, Toby thinks he's badass, and uh, I don't know. Um, well, to be honest, we got a couple drinks in the studio. Uh, I'm also not in peak physical condition, but so far I feel, uh, I feel, feel like I may take this one. What just happened is he let a lot more balls go by than he was comfortable with. And for the record, these are Toby's gloves. They're way too big for me. He's using it as a handicap, but I'm gonna go with it because that's the kind of person I am. is 45 to 3. Um, I'm going to not hold back. This is the no holds barred uh, round. These little cheaters are going to both come at me and they're going to kick from opposite ends. Watch. Watch. I knew it was gonna be easy. 
I knew it was gonna be downhill with a tailwind, but uh, I didn't know she would be this bad. He's just sad because for round one, I got way more balls than he was expecting. Well, uh, we played, how, how did, how did it, how, how, how did it go? We're not talking. Okay. <laughs> Him and I are not talking. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Close? Hum humbled, <laughs> humbled to say the least. No, it was fun. It was really, really fun. Um, I kicked in a couple, which I'm really proud of myself for. I took some balls to the body, which some I intended to be in front of and some I did not intend to be in front of and just happen to, to get in front of? Uh, no, well, I think, uh, you know, every once in a while, it's uh, it's important for me, you know, this day is not gonna go 100% my way, so when I have my opportunities, I, I feel like I have to take them, which might be my kick-ass. Take your opportunities when they're in front of you guys. Kick-ass takeaway for this is watch out for the vengeance in people's eyes. <laughs>
right back in? Oh, you lose. Yes! You lose. is don't listen to haters. That's it. No matter yeah. how many people are chirping in your ear, you got to stay focused Especially on the Especially when they were ultimately correct and she did indeed go on to lose. Don't listen to them. Eye on the prize. Here we are in downtown Las Vegas, Fremont Street Experience, perfect place to end the day. What a competition. Great day. We have played soccer, we have danced, we've painted, we've played some bar games. Yes. Poorly yes. on my part. We've learned, we've loved, and we've kicked a little ass. Yeah, we have. You've kicked ass today. Thank you, and thank you for pushing me. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention you kicked some ass today, Brandy. Thank you. I I, I dodged things today. <laughs> I pushed myself today. I may be sore tomorrow, but Good. all of it better, better for me. So now, who gets the elusive crown? I don't know, man. I feel like the whole thing about the strategic hot box, the whole thing about the three year, there, no one's a winner or a loser. So we pushed ourselves all day, and to be honest with you, I think we're both winners, and that we should probably just keep pushing ourselves for the rest of the day. You know, you did say on the hot box earlier that you were afraid of heights. So we could push that boundary a little. I I did say that. Uh, I think there's a little zip line in my in our future. What do you think? I'll do it. All right. So we'll end the day today on a little zip line. We'll give this to one of the kids, yeah. and then we'll urge all of you to keep kicking butt and join. And thank you so much for joining us on the Strategic Hop Box. Three years. Three. Three, three. years. Three. Gotta look at one, two, three. <laughs> three years. on the strategic hot box from the bottom of my heart for everyone listening and watching everybody I've met from all over the world for all the guests that have been here the people that support this people that answer the text the people that say yes thank you and thank you in a million other languages you're all very special this show is because of you thank you to Toby for yes. being here yes. thank you for being out for the crazy competition uh. thank you for to, <laughs> to Paul Norgrove for being here and joining us today and in the celebration all around learn love kick ass Good and stuff, I'm, right I'm turning 29 again yeah, so it's your Zach, 11th here comes, annual here comes Zach birthday. right now joining yeah, us here. Would dude. you do a, uh, and as he's doing this, uh, if you want to, shout out to us on, where's yours, Zach? Uh, on on, on <laughs> Facebook or at, uh, at Strategic Hot Box or Instagram or Twitter. Join us um, and let us know what you want to know. But until then, until I see you again, mm -hmm. get out there and kick some ass. Yes. Cheers. Cheers.